Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This is Chapter 4, Structure of the Atom, Part 1. Now, in this video, we're going to learn about how Democritus, Aristotle, and Dalton had created atomic models and see which one is the more correct version. Also, we're going to look at how Dalton's theory of the atom explains the conservation of mass. And then lastly, we're going to precisely define the atom. Okay, so what happened in times of the Greeks is they were trying to figure out what is matter. And they obviously used their own world to help come up with some ideas about matter. Now notice with the Greeks, they're looking actually at four types of matter. And they thought one was water, one was earth, one was fire, and then one was air. Now if you combine air and water, you get a moist matter. If you compare water with earth, you, you get a cold matter. So they had some very distinct ideas about matter. Now, of course, there was a problem with that idea, and you know, of course, what that problem is, but let's talk about it. So there were two leading theorists. The first one was Democritus. Now, Democritus, his belief is that when we're looking at matter, we're looking at what he called atoms, and these atoms can occupy empty space. Now, the, the very revolutionary idea he thought was they were solid, homogenous, and indivisible. So he called these bits of matter atoms, and you couldn't break them down into something smaller. He also believed that there were different sizes and shapes of atoms. So he knew that there wasn't just one type of atom, there had to be multiples. And also, he decided that these atoms would determine the properties. Now, there's the second Greek, Aristotle. Now, Aristotle did not like empty space. I mean, you probably heard of the, the phrase, nature abhors a vacuum. And he was one of those major proponents that there's no way that nature would allow empty space. So because of that reasoning, he said that earth, fair, fire, air, and water were the four types of matter. Now, we know now that Democritus was closer to the truth, but Aristotle was very good at debating. And because they did not experiment at all, they just used their reasoning skills, um, Aristotle won out. And unfortunately, he won out for about 2,000 years. Now, luckily, in 1803, a man by the name of John Dalton took Democritus's idea about the atom and proposed six new ideas about matter. And this is what we call Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton's atomic theory. Now, when you look at this theory, and he did experiment, he did multiple experiments, he knew that matter had to have extremely small particles called atoms. So he took Democritus's statement about atoms and he revived it. He also stated that they are indivisible. You cannot get to a smaller piece of matter. He also determined from his experiments that elements are identical in size, mass, and properties. So if you're looking at one type of atom, it has to have those specific things. He also knew from his experiments that specific elements are different from another type of element. So he was able to determine different types of atoms. He also, from his experiments, discovered that there had to be whole number ratios and these atoms would form compounds. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. And then lastly, in a chemical reaction, atoms are separated, combined, or rearranged. So he knew that they didn't go away. He knew that they stayed in the reaction, but they occupied different uh, places in time and space. Now, I'm going to recommend that you maybe make some flashcards with these different um, postulates because you're going to see them again on the quiz. So Dalton essentially knew that matter would be rearranged. It didn't disappear. And there was a man by the name of Lavoisier that had done this experiment. And what he did is he took a container and he weighed it. And in that container, he put some tin in there. So this tin, he took a magnifying glass in the sun 
and he heated up the tin while it was in this closed container and he kept it on the scale. And notice that after the tin had changed its substance, he noticed that the mass did not change. So Dalton's atomic theory is supported by the conservation of mass. Okay, here is the whole number ratios that he was also trying to get at. Notice we have two types of atoms. We have nitrogen and oxygen, but they can combine in whole number ratios. Okay, what does this mean? Well, if we were to make water, notice that when we make water, and we've done this many times in the lab, we need eight grams of oxygen and we need um, one gram of hydrogen. Together they form nine grams of water. Now, if by chance we accidentally weigh out 10 grams, notice that we have two grams left over of oxygen. But if we add one gram of hydrogen, there is no leftover hydrogen, okay? So these are the whole number ratios that Dalton was getting at. Okay, so lastly, we wanna talk about the atom. And the atom, we know, is the smallest particle of an element. And in that element, it retains its properties. Now, this is the really tough part where you have to wrap your head around the size of the atom. So here I have the moon and I have a penny. So say for instance, you're on the moon and you accidentally drop a penny, okay? Now, obviously that moon is massive. It's huge compared to that penny. Now, if we took this penny and we equated it to the size of the moon, a little tiny atom of hydrogen would be in the same ratio as that penny to the moon. So this little tiny atom would occupy a very, very tiny space within this penny because of its size. Okay, so in summary, Democritus was the first person to propose atoms, and he believed they were solid, homogeneous, and indivisible. Aristotle, unfortunately, did not buy into that de debate, and he thought that fire, water, earth, and air were the four basis of matter. Luckily, Dalton came along 2,000 years later and he revived Democritus' idea about the atom and he came up with those postulates based on his experiments. And then lastly, the atom is the smallest particle of an element and please remember that retains the element's properties. We'll obviously talk about smaller bits of matter but for now, we just want to um, look at the atom.